saying that um, while he did not, he's not contesting the fact that he failed to report it, his campaign has come out and said that he did report it in other ways. As you say, they want the official proper channels, but he's saying that he did release that information at some point. That's right. Yeah, they said it was an inadvertent oversight. They didn't file it with the Federal Elections Commission, which is where you would imagine that you would file those things. But even more troubling to me personally is uh, Cruz shifting his position on Ed Snowden. This is from The Hill today. They say, he says, today we know that Snowden violated federal law, that his actions materially aided terrorists and enemies in the United States under the Constitution. Giving aid to enemies is treason. So he's accusing Ed Snowden of treason. Now, previously, he said that if he pointed out that the government was seizing millions of personal records without search warrants, then he was doing a public service. He was criticized for that by Marco Rubio, but now he's calling Ed Snowden a traitor. A lone traitor. Yeah, yeah, very yeah, troubling. That's incredible. And saying that you can be against Snowden, but also, you know, be against the NSA and their overreach. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people aren't really, ha they're not happy with that. Yeah. How, yeah. how do you go around it if you want to be a whistleblower? Well, yeah, that's the question because they'll come down hard on Bradley Manning. They'll come down on uh, Snowden and Assange and all these other guys. But it's always kill the messenger. It's never let's take a look at the people who are actually doing these heinous actions. And I mean, I can understand you have a guy like Manning. He kind of does a widespread data dump, you know, endangers some guys in the field. I understand that. But nobody says after we get done with Manning looking at his case, why don't we actually look at the guys who are yeah. perpetrating these actions. They never right. do. And that's what Rand Paul said. He said, okay, you want to prosecute Snowden? Then let's prosecute the people who are illegally collecting information. Let's mm -hmm. prosecute Hayden. Let's prosecute Clapper, who lied uh, to the Senate Intelligence Committee, lied to the American people, violated the Constitution, prosecute them as well, because what they did is treasonous. But look, what Ed Snowden did was informed by the way that whistleblowers of the NSA, people like my, uh, William Benny, people like Thomas Drake. Thomas Drake was prosecuted uh, they tried to send him to jail for possession of some documents that, um, you know, were, were training documents that have been classified after the fact, okay? Mm -hmm. Nothing that was classified information, nothing that even approached the kind of documents that Hillary Clinton uh, right. was keeping, destroying, altering, and so forth and so on, okay? There was like four documents in question. One of them was like, you know, information is your friend. I mean, it was, it was, uh, Innocuous. yeah, it, it was training type of uh, documents, okay? And so they came after him, tried to persecute him. And Ed Snowden said that he saw this happen to this generation of NSA whistleblowers. Understand there were four or five whistleblowers within the NSA that realized right after September 11th that they were doing this dragnet surveillance against the Constitution, people like Thomas Drake. And they were very concerned about this. They became whistleblowers and they paid the price. They came after them. So Ed Snowden knew that if he blew uh, the whistle on these people, they would come after him. That's why he did it the way that he did. I don't question what he did at all. I think he did a public service to the United States uh, in exposing that information. He's not a traitor. The traitors right. are the people who are violating the Constitution, who remain in office, who lie to our face, and the politicians who back them up. People like Ted Cruz, and unfortunately, Donald Trump has said the same thing about Ed Snowden, that he's a traitor. Right. So where do you go with this? I well, mean, and the complicit <laughs> media as well, who backs them up every step of the way and demonizes yeah. these people in the media and in the, the minds mm -hmm. of the American people who don't want to do any further investigation. They just want to listen to what the talking heads tell them to believe right. and understand. Now, as we talk about Donald Trump and Ted Cruz, again, Donald Trump brought up the birther issue, the fact of natural born citizen, yeah. the fact that uh, Ted Cruz does not qualify under <laughs> that. Now, that's opened up a real interesting line of inquiry here. Mm. Because I think that when we look at Ted Cruz, this underscores a, a very strong inconsistency, let's say, to say the least, okay? The fact that he wants to appoint Supreme Court judges who are strict originalists, people like Scalia, who say that we need to go by the strict interpretation of the text, even to the point of looking at what they were, what the original intent was. Look at the debates, look at the commentaries that happened at the time, okay? And that has been uh, Ted Cruz's position. He says he's going to appoint judges like that. Well, Lawrence Tribe, who was Ted Cruz's professor at Harvard in law school, uh, wrote an essay on uh, Monday talking about the fact that a strict constitutionalist would say that Ted Cruz does not qualify under natural born citizen. Wow. He pointed out that the strict constitutionalist uh, would say that you have to have two parents who are American citizens, that you have to be born in the United States. And most of the people who are coming up and questioning uh, his citizenship, his requirement, uh, his meeting the requirements, most of them are on the left. And what they are saying 
is that, uh, well, we're going to uh, give a pass to anybody if they had one or more parents who were not American citizens at the time, as long as they were born in the United States. In other words, anchor babies, okay? Mm -hmm. So your anchor baby candidates would be people like Marco Rubio, Bobby Jindal, uh, Nikki Haley, uh, Haley okay? Uh, they were born in the United States, but they had parents who were not citizens at the time of their birth. But when you look at Ted Cruz, it's a bit worse than that, because Ted Cruz, even though he had uh, one uh, parent who was an American by birth, uh, Ted Cruz was not even born in the United States. Right. So what we've got is a lawsuit's been filed in Florida against both uh, Marco Rubio and Ted Cruz, questioning their qualifications for office. We also have uh, Alan Grayson, who's a congressman from Florida, uh, and he's, uh, I would disagree with him on most issues, okay? But I strongly agree with him when he came out against the TPP and the uh, transatlantic uh, partnerships. Mm -hmm. uh, he's very right about those. Yeah, exactly. NSA. He's been right on a lot of issues. Uh, so, you know, whether this is partisan politics to kind of uh, throw a monkey wrench in the whole process or whatever his motivations are, he has been on the right side of some issues. Right. He says he's going to challenge a Cruz candidacy uh, all the way to the Supreme Court, which is what Donald Trump tweeted out this week. Mm -hmm. said, you know, it's going to be a disaster if Ted Cruz gets this because he doesn't qualify for this. Right, and a lot of people want to come and attack Trump because he's the easiest target, because he's the one that sort of opens his mouth and doesn't say things in a very eloquent way at all. But there are a lot of other people that are also saying the same things or have already filed lawsuits yeah. with the same intent. <clears throat> and it's not just Ted Cruz, but it's Marco Rubio as well. And that's the, that's the good thing about Donald Trump, is that he's brought up right. things that would not have been discussed but that should be discussed. He brought and that's the whole why we, immigration debate to exactly, the table last year. Exactly. And that's <laughs> why we should have Rand Paul here tonight. I, yes. I so agree. Rand Paul should be here because he brings topics to the fore that other candidates do not discuss. And I think his exclusion out of this debate it raises a lot of questions. It's very telling. Yes. I understand that this last survey that was done by Bloomberg in the Des Moines Register it finished on Sunday, along with two other polls that were included. Now, those two polls published their results on Monday. But Bloomberg poll held their results for 36 hours and published them first thing on Wednesday morning. That's when this all erupted. That's why Rand Paul was going on all the different uh, media uh, everywhere, television, radio, talking about this. Now, if that poll had not been embargoed for 36 hours, then Rand Paul would have been tied with Jeb Bush. Wow. He would have finished that strong. So they've got a poll, shows him finishing strong, so they hide that poll and they keep it out. And here's what I think is really offensive. The fact that Fox News would say, I, I'm sorry, they didn't report it in time, so we have to pretend it didn't happen. The yeah, polling that, took place between January the 7th and January the 10th, and they have to pretend that that poll never happened. And it's completely artificial, and it's, right. I think, a, a rigged system to oh. softly, uh, you know, rig this election. We've seen, oh, absolutely! Uh, the crews out there right now in Charleston, South Carolina. A big did a report earlier today where he showed the Rand Paul supporters yeah. out there saying, you know, we want, we want Rand, Same we support Rand. Rand. Also, you know, Rand Paul, he's going on these uh, media shows and he's kind of just fed up. He's just giving people the finger. He flipped the media <laughs> off today. He's, 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 he's you know, this is up. ridiculous. This is, we saw the same thing happen to Ron Paul, and he got shut out of every single debate, even though. Uh, he was high up in the polls. They wouldn't even put his name on the screen. Yeah, but yeah. people didn't even know who he was or That's that right. he was running at all. And it's the same thing. They would Rand put Paul, people who would finish below him there right. and skip him. You know, he and might be in fourth place and they'd put the fifth, sixth, and seventh place right. people. And Rand Paul is yeah. the one that's been consistent years before all of this. He didn't get into the Senate to become the president someday, like mm -hmm. a lot of these people. They haven't. What have they even done? with their representation, with their political power. All they've gotten in there to do was shake hands, you know, and put some money in their pockets and well, make some promises for when they become the president. Yeah, you, you have you had situations with Gary Johnson. They, they said, you didn't meet the qualification. They didn't even put him on the polls. That's okay? right. They didn't even list his name, even though he was a two-term governor. So they rigged this whole system. We shouldn't put so much emphasis on this horse race aspect. Right. You have to understand that, you know, people can push these polls one way or the other, depending on who they include in the polls, how they select the people that they're polling. Uh, so this whole thing is smoke and mirrors. We need to understand that. Mm -hmm. And it's one way that they truly do rig this election, building people's expectations up. Now, you turn talking about in terms of uh, Rand Paul, one of the metrics that I saw was that this uh, undercard debate that they have, as I like to call it, the junior uh, JV debate. Kids whatever. table. Kids yeah, table. Kids table. They had 4.7 million people watch that in the last one, okay? Mm -hmm. They estimate just from the TV appearances that 
Rand Paul put in over the last uh, 28 hours, 20, 24 to 48 hours, that he got 7 million uh, views on that. So, you know, that's, uh, I think he's playing that the right, right way. I think he's playing that smart. And it brings up another issue, which is the complete uh, disappearance of the, of the influence of money on television. I think it's part of the restructuring of media, the fact that television ads have not played that big a role. People like Jeb Bush, who spent a lot of money on TV yes. ads, have, have got nothing at all to show for it. And I thought it was interesting, one of his packs just disbanded, and it was called Vamos Jeb, okay, <laughs> which was, let's go Jeb. But when I saw that, <laughs> not, the, not speaking Spanish, I thought it was Vamos Jeb, <laughs> like, get out of here and get out of here quickly, okay? And so they disbanded, but a lot of donors are asking for their money back. They think this isn't really working out for them, even though with these super PACs, they can put in unlimited amounts of money into the super PACs. It just isn't paying off. Donald Trump has been able to come out and bring up topics that the other people will not broach, uh, like, for example, natural born citizen requirements. He brings those types of things up. Uh, it creates a buzz on social media. And then he gets invited to talk about it on uh, the news programs. And that's what Rand Paul tapped into with this exclusion from the debate. I think right. it's a very wise thing for him to do. Very that. Smart. Yeah, guys. And if I can jump in here, they really are saying Rand Paul looks like the winner because he had unfettered access essentially to yes. Yes. everybody's ears. He came on our show yesterday, was able to talk about one, his audit, the Fed bill and why it didn't pass. And, and I think it's mm -hmm. shameful that those Democrats just sto t towed the line. People like Elizabeth Warren, who claim they're against the big banks, just folded, just said, eh, hey, whatever. Right. And Ted they're Cruz, not serious about this. Ted Cruz actually had the audacity to say, oh, it was just you could tell it was going to fail. So I didn't even bother to go. What was it? Seven votes, <laughs> seven <laughs> votes. If yeah. he would have yeah. showed up, That's you know, right. he could have swayed the, right. those other six people to. Yeah. So, yeah, that's another example. As I said, it's been a bad week for Ted Cruz. Uh, reversing himself on, on Ed Snowden. Now, instead of Ed Snowden being a public servant, he is now a traitor. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then saying that he was a co sponsor of Audit the Fed, but uh, he can't bother to be. To yeah, show it's going to fail anyway, so I'm not going to waste my time that's right. trying to fight for the American people. And that happens right. within a day or so of it coming out that he's got Wall Street. Uh, connections right. with uh, Goldman Sachs that he well, didn't want, want to report audit when he ran for Senate. So yeah, he doesn't want to audit himself. Time. That's right. <laughs> yeah, don't audit the Ted Cruz campaign. Yeah. Don't audit his citizenship requirements. Right. And of course, as I said before, putatively, his his mother was he, she has a um, uh, an American uh, birth certificate, and they showed that as if that was the issue. That is not the issue. And you should understand and look for yourself to see what the qualifications for natural born citizen are. Now, didn't you mention that she had possibly taken an oath? Yes. Uh, well, that's the thing. A lot of people have questioned whether or not she became a Canadian citizen. Her name showed up on a Canadian voting roll. And they say the way that was compiled was they would go uh, as part of a census. They would go door to door and ask people. Uh, what their age was, take their name and address, and ask them if they're a Canadian citizen, and then they would put them on the voting rolls. Now, his father admits that after he was fighting for Castro, uh, came to America, then went to Canada, that he uh, he became a Canadian citizen. Uh, she does not admit that she became a Canadian citizen. He's not main, and he's maintained that that didn't happen. But as Lawrence Tribe pointed out, when you go back and you look at the original intent. Citizenship came through the father as well. That was another issue. Okay, mm -hmm. so that would be something that would uh, that we've Barack. talked about. Yeah, we've talked about uh, Barack Obama in, in those terms. But I think the key point here that Lawrence Tribe was pointing out was that Ted Cruz wants to appoint originalist Supreme Court justices, which we would want as conservatives and libertarians. But at the same time, when it comes to what works out for Ted Cruz, he's more than willing to throw that under the bus and say, well, we're going to go with a living constitution approach, mm -hmm. okay, and just say that, well, if, if uh, I don't know what his basis is, because he wasn't born in America. So I mean, it gets really tenuous with him. He has the weakest uh, qualifications for citizenship of all the anchor babies that are running for president and vice president that we're looking at. And uh, as Lawrence Tribe said, one more thing about that, that I thought was very interesting. He said, all of this came about because people were very concerned there were going to be foreign uh, European influence that was going to come into America and try to take it over by taking the right. executive position. Mm -hmm. And I think when we look at the presidency of Barack Obama, someone who had very weak ties to America, who grew up in Indonesia, not uh, caring or understanding about our culture, uh, I think that that's a legitimate concern to this day. Now, Lawrence Tribe doesn't. He's a liberal. And he says, 
it was the same thing that caused them to put in the Second Amendment and to define militia. And he says, well, today I would say the militia is an 